Mascom's new acting CEO, Brian Molefi, told Parliament today that load shedding could be scrapped by year-end if the parastatal can feed an extra 3,000 megawatts to the grid. This has labor disputes threatened to further derail its new build program. So to what extent can impact investment from the private sector players help? Joining us in studio with his take is Kashif Isaacs. He's an infrastructure portfolio manager at Emergence Investment Managers. And that's a firm that already has invested close to a billion rand in renewable projects across South Africa. So uh, Kashif, are renewables the answer to ESCOM's problems at the moment? I think, uh, good evening, Stephen. I think certainly it makes a significant contribution. Um, we're fortunate enough in, for example, the wind farms that, that are active around the coast, there's a natural um, change in wind and, and sea temperature um, during the early part of the evening, which is when our peak demand spikes. And that naturally gives us a higher wind resource and allows those, fir those farms to contribute to the national grid and, and, and the additional power that it demands. But we are talking about small amounts going into the grid, though, from solar farms yeah. and wind farms and the likes, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, we are. Um, at the moment, we have about uh, a gigawatt of power coming from renewables. Um, the other challenge with renewables is you can't predict availability, um, and ESCOM needs dispatchable power. It does offset some of the demand uh, uh, constraints we currently face, but it's not you know, uh, the permanent or, or, or part of, it is part of the longer term answer, but it, it, it helps to offset some of the shorter term issues as well. How, how as an investor do you invest in projects like these? Do you invest at source? Are you going through partners? How does the investment work? So our investments are all in the debt space. So we, we co-lend with the commercial banks um, and some of the development finance institutions into these projects. So would that give you, Amelia, some uh, comfort if you know that they're <laughs> investing alongside a bank? Because I'm sure those mm. banks are looking very carefully at the due diligence and at these projects. Yes, but I think also um, there's a lot of guidelines from government um, that they have to invest in those projects. Um, so I don't think that necessarily makes it very safe. Because um, I can just imagine that they are very much capital intensive and that you have to wait a, a long time before you get any dividends or um, I don't know how open these books are. And what name, in, in what are the names of these vehicles? Are they in the bond market named, uh, connected to the bank or in their own names? Um, there's only one that is currently uh, in, in the listed spaces, one in the bond market, one that's called the Soytech project. Um, the, the rest are all currently uh, unlisted investments. So it's private companies. Private equity. Private e yeah, private yes. equity type. And, and some of them are utility scale uh, investors. So, so we have large international utility scale operators. It's uh, ESCOM's double the size of ESCOM mm. investing and actively developing projects in the South African market. And is it also private client kind of investors, um, single pers people investing into these projects? Uh, not, uh, some of them, yes. So there are some direct investors. There are, uh, it really is a, a mix of different investors with different uh, uh, agendas and different strategies. And what sorts of returns would you expect to get from projects like these, Kashif? As an equity investor, yeah. um, so equity investment returns they, they do vary significantly depending on the bid window. Um, so there's been th four bid windows so far, um, and it depends also on the, the strategic investors' objectives. So if you're looking at a utility player, typically the, the investment objectives are um, to develop an asset base and operate these assets over the life of the power plant. So they're typically happy with a, low, with a return that's slightly lower than a pure financial investor. Um, and we've seen the range anywhere from sort of 13 to 20, 20 plus percent, um, depending on how early the project went into the bid program and the nature of the strategic investor. And then how, how would these renewable investments sit in your infrastructure portfolio? So um, if you look at the broader infrastructure uh, requirements in South Africa, energy, you know, for all obvious reasons at the moment, given the load shedding we're experiencing, is, is critical. Um, there's also you know, other areas of interest for us as an as a investment manager. We're looking at port expansion. So Saldana Bay, which is, you know, looking, the government's looking to roll out a significant industrial development zone um, and develop an oil and gas hub. You know, so those are the type of sort of long-term infrastructure uh, type assets that we're looking to invest in. They are relatively insular against short-term uh, market uh, shocks. You, know, you, you can predict the, the cash coming back to the investor. You can predict the return uh, expectations over a very long period. 
And so, so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting asset class um, for pension funds particularly. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, Iria, you, you have said the government, there is a push from government, so pension funds becoming increasingly involved in projects like that. In fact, they've changed the mandates and lifted the, the percentages that they can invest in projects mm -hmm. like these, haven't they? Yes, I think they have. And um, it makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, the, the South African market is quite small. There's not a lot of listed entities. I think it's less than, I think, 450. So I can imagine that they would also always look out for, for other opportunities and especially in a market like this where evaluation levels are quite high, it must be very difficult for pension funds um, to, do, to, to do proper applications of the funds that they have available. So it makes a lot of sense to me and as far as I know a lot of these projects, um, they have already have a contract in place to deliver um, the, the power into the grid or to the local authorities. Yeah, so effectively that's another feature that makes this um, very attractive for a typical pension fund investor is you have a long-term power purchase mm -hmm. agreement with government that, that effectively is structured as a take or pay contract. So if your plant is able to dispatch power to the grid, um, you know, your government is obligated to, take, to pay for, those, for that uh, availability. So you know you've got. Uh, the, it comes back to the predictability of the revenue and the returns. Mm -hmm. um, That's always a good yeah. investment if you can Absolutely. predict the future yeah. cash flow of of, of um, your investment. I mean, that is the ultimate um, investment that you would want to invest in. And hopefully keep the lights on at the same time. We have to leave <laughs> there. Kashif, thank you very much for coming through thank today. Thank you very much, Stephen. That's Kashif Isaacs. He's Infrastructure Portfolio Manager at Emergence Investment Managers. Of course, Amelia Morgenroth from PSG Silver Lake.